This is Ken Jureski. We're talking pictures today with uh, legendary photographer Tony Vaccaro. He's, uh, he's uh, joining us from Long Island, and I couldn't be more excited to talk with him today. I'm just a huge fan of his work. Hi, Tony. How are you? I am well, thank you. I, great, I feel great. Took a wonderful walk this morning. The sun is splendid here, so I feel great. So happy birthday. You were just out in Santa Fe last week. Correct. Yes. Thank you so much. In you, two uh, years, we'll reach 100. God bless you. That's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but uh, you got you to gotta show it to uh, the Monroe Gallery there in Santa Fe right now. How's that going? It's beautiful. I was there. When were we there, Maria? Two days ago. Two days ago. Uh, and kind of helped the setting it up, and it looks superb. That exhibition, uh, what I've seen, it's just wonderful. My, yeah, you see my activity from Omaha Beach to Berlin, all the way to Berlin, where by the way, I met Kennedy, he came to say a few words in Berlin. That was kind of a famous speech, if I recall. Yes, yes, it was. Where he says in German, Ich bin ein Berliner. I am a Berliner. <laughs> For Kennedy to say that was superb. Right. So you spent, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's start at the beginning if we can. You, uh, you got out of high school, you had a camera in your hand, and there was a war in Europe, and so what'd you do? Well, uh, I knew that sooner or later, uh, when I would finish high school, I would be drafted in the army. And that's ex exactly what happened. And, uh, and I was sent to uh, Mississippi to do the basic training. Uh, from Mississippi, uh, we moved... Uh, closer towards uh, France and, and eventually uh, we arrived uh, where those old stones are around just before Germany, where mankind uh, was there perhaps millions of years ago when you were... Uh, Stonehenge. Stonehenge. That's not near Germany. <laughs> No, not near Germany, but near France, no? In England. In England, near, near France, near Plymouth. Well, that's near... where you camped out. Yes. So they, 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 they had you, uh, your, 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 they had you uh, headquarters near Stonehenge before uh, D-Day as you're that's getting right. ready. Ready for D-Day. Uh, I think we waited some a little over 30, a little over a month, we waited there for the landing at Omaha Beach. So you Omaha were... you know, is the capital of Nebraska, so that this was just uh, confusing the Germans thinking that Hitler would never know where Omaha was, you see. So they, they didn't know that Omaha was going to be in France, you see. We were speaking of entering France. Of course, uh, I, I grew I grew up in Omaha, Tony, and I I still not sure where it is. Uh, <laughs> so you, you Omaha is in Nebraska. Yeah, go Big Red. Yeah, I love I love Omaha. It's uh, good people there. Yes, yes. So. Um, you had a camera. You were, you were 18, 19 at the time? How old were you? Yeah, uh, 18, 18, uh, 18. I had uh, an Argus C3. I could show it to you. Do we have an Argus? Uh, somewhere during this talk, I will show you my favorite camera, the Argus C3, which is just about the only camera made uh, in the USA. No, it's a wonderful camera. I, I have one of I have one around here as well. I, I love that that camera. It's very yeah. nice. Yeah, it was American, made in America. I believed in America. I believed it. 
I don't know if I said it already, but I was born in Greensburg, Pennsylvania, the 20th of December, 1922. No, it's, uh, it's uh, good people there too. We love, uh, we love this and, country. And uh, it's, it's uh, you, you, uh, you uh, documented the, the, the war, you, uh, documented this country, you documented Europe rebuilding. You've been everywhere, Tony. But uh, right before D-Day, um, I know you wanted to be, you wanted to be a photographer uh, for the Army single, Signal Corps, but uh, they wouldn't let you, but, but that didn't stop you, did it? Well, uh, the, it, it was the reason why uh, they didn't accept me. Uh, I was too young. Now, I was young enough to carry a, a, a rifle, an M1, uh, and not uh, take pictures, you see. So uh, I was lucky to find uh, a major, my major in, in uh, 83rd Infantry Division, 2nd Battalion, who, uh, as soon as he found out that I had a camera, he immediately said, what are you doing, boy? Start shooting. So I started shooting, and, uh, and when the war was over, my pictures were far better than all of the, uh, what the army tried to do. Well, it worked, it worked out well for you because uh, you, were, you were with your, what, what, uh, what uh, battalion were you in? Uh, I, I was the second battalion. And what company? Sorry, second, second headquarters company? Headquarters company. Okay. Under Major, oh God. York? Oh, oh, uh, the colonel, the Colonel York. Colonel York, okay. Yeah. Great leader, just great leader. So the, the you were the eighty third. I mean, you guys were kind of what they call the tip of the spear. You were you were uh, heading right across France into Germany at the in front of everyone, pretty much, right? Yes, yes. We were ahead of everyone. Colonel, Colonel New York was that kind of person. And so the fact that you were an infantryman, you were a private, but you had your camera and you had the permission to make photos, it kind of worked out better for you in some ways. Um, uh, yes, yes, the reason is that at the end of the war, I was the owner of all those pictures. If That's I what I would say. Them, yeah, they would have all my work. You would. You would have had to turn your film over. You might not have ever seen it again. And exactly, um, quite possible. Yes. Yes. So, so everything out well. Yeah. No. And then uh, that uh, we'll talk about. Well, I'll, 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 I'll show some of your pictures, but uh, just to just to set the tone. Um, and I'll say a few words about those pictures. Okay. Well, let's 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 go ahead and look at the pictures. I'll put them on the screen. You'll be able to see them on your screen as well. Okay. If I if I do this um, right, which is always um, a question. So I, I wanted to talk about this image first, Tony, because it's um, it's uh, it's almost the view of of one soldier of another soldier. I mean, you're you're a full time soldier as well as a photographer, and yeah. it's very there's there's a there's a certain level of uh, empathy here that uh, that makes for this image to just last, and and it could be a statue at this point. It's so. It's such a lasting image. Can you go ahead and tell me about it? Well, this is how that picture was made. Uh, about a quarter of a mile back was the, uh, the U.S. Uh, consulate 
And I had gone there uh, to register uh, with the army. And as I came out of the uh, building, I looked straight ahead down from the consulate and I see this man, uh, he was well dressed, uh, brand new shoes, uh, and uh, much later when, when he sort of woke up, uh, he told me that he was a German, a prisoner of war, uh, the U.S. war in Texas. Uh, and that's where he had been given all the clothes uh, and, and a lot of those things he was carrying in his pack. So it was uh, in front uh, of the U.S. consulate that I took this picture. What, uh, so it's just this classic image and it could, like I say, it, it, it will last for generations. This. A generation, yeah. yes. Yeah. Just... Family was dead. All his children were gone. Yes. The house is dry. Yes. Uh, the tragedy with this picture, in a way, the way you see him, he's kind of crying because uh, uh, his house uh, was totally destroyed. And that's when he lost uh, the whole family that he had. And so, in a way, he was kind of crying in this position. No, I think you call this defeated soldier, this image, and it's very, um, it's very the apt the soldier, description, yes. yes. This is, uh, I think, Italy, right? No, no. Frankfurt, Germany. Oh, this, uh, this is Frankfurt. Oh, so, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, you moved up. Yes, this is. Uh, <laughs> this is Monte Cassino. Oh, Cassino. Uh, uh, there was a, it, it was a beautiful town, which uh, at the end of the hill on the left. Uh, uh, was uh, monks were there, and uh, I walked up there, and uh, and before I did, I clicked these pictures, and then I start walking up this hill, and where the hill ended, there was a sort of a a place where monks were living. I think it's uh, I think it's very um, um, telling that this is kind of your preferred light that this image was made under. You 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 shoot a lot in overcast uh, uh, skies with this silverly silver and like. Wrong. The horse hadn't eaten for days. Uh, not one house was standing. They all. Uh, 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 W w the horse is actually standing, which later on, when everything was cleared, uh, uh, there was a big square with trees and a lot of people, you know, which uh, somewhere I did take some of those pictures later on. I just, I, I just, I think it's, 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 it's a haunting image and it's beautiful, like, uh, you know, I always say that the first thing you have to do before you can uh, tell, uh, show someone a photo, you have to entertain them a little bit before they can really get into it. And, and yes. you see, hey. you see, I see you doing that over and over again, is why I bring well, it up. This was interesting picture when I took it. I actually saw uh, uh, an X. Uh, a line from right to top to left bottom. And then the left top and right bottom, like an X, you know. And in the middle of this X, you see this lonely white horse that nobody knew to who it belonged because 
perhaps the owner had gotten killed, we don't know. And we never found uh, the owner of those horses. So the composition, I mean, you're coming straight out of high school. You shouldn't know the, the, this comp composition of that, uh, that well, but you do. And I think one of your earlier teachers said you were a natural photographer. Is that? Mr. Lewis. Yes. He was the man who put everything about photography in my mind. I really, when I, uh, at some point uh, at the beginning of my life, I went to see the museum of, in the Vatican. And, uh, and in this museum, there is uh, a sculpture, a Greek sculpture, and if you go, you will see it there. It's still there, no heads, no hands, no legs, it's just a torso. I photographed this torso with the idea, uh, I, I, I did it as a, a, as a sculpture. And uh, my teacher, Mr. Bertram Lewis, at the high school, said, Tony, it's a, it's a very good thing, but don't you forget ever in your life that you are a born photographer. And Amazing. That was, and that was it. It, yeah. it was it. He is the man who put me in the right direction. Yeah, it's, ama it's amazing to me. You know, a lot, of, a lot of photographers, they started out wanting to be artists or even musicians in some way. But uh, when they first got a camera in their hand, the good ones, the great ones, it was almost just like a, a, a duck taking the water. It was just, it's, 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 it's magical how that happens. Yeah, and this, uh, in, in a way, this is magic. You see the center, and then there's sort of an X. And he's right in the middle of this X. Absolutely. Oh, this, this was amazing also. Uh, we were advancing in, uh, in Germany. Uh, 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 this was a, one of the soldiers that I was part of. He was part of my unit. And uh, the smoke bomb was uh, thrown by us to confuse the Germans uh, as to where we were in this area. And you really became uh, visible only when you got out of the smoke, the smoke bomb that we put up. And uh, in a way, uh, when uh, we went through this, we saw the Germans running away and we killed as many and wounded as many as happened to take place at that time. This is, uh, is this in Germany or France? This was uh, the beginning of Germany. We just left uh, Omaha Beach in France, and uh, and it's it's the uh, as you see in the back, there are a lot of trees. Uh, this I was, was wondering. the beginning of the Hurricane Forest. Mm -hmm. Now it's interesting. I mean, once again, it's it's uh, it's. Uh, it, you capture these moments that they could be uh, sculptures any themselves. Object. Could be any U.S. Right, object. right. It's a universal image of that captures this moment. So you take away the face, the moment yes. is still there. Yeah, and it's a, I consider one of my best pictures. No, it's a good one. It's a keeper, Tony. Yes, yes. So let me let's talk about this one. This I know you have a lot to, to explain in this image just as well. Uh, this was during the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, all I did uh, was to uh, 
take a picture. Uh, then I began to walk away. And then I said, Tony, see if you can find who he is. So I went back. I, I, I walked only like 20 yards. Then I walked back. And with my bayonet, I chopped away because uh, after the rain, it had snowed and there was kind of a, a layer of ice on top of the snow. So I chopped away and I found out his name, uh, Tannenbaum. And uh, I, I didn't tell anything else. Fifth Fifty years later, I get a phone call, and he said, uh, that was my father. When you took the picture, I was one year old. So I said, well, I'm so happy that you called me. And he said, by the way, I want to go back to that place where my father, Tannenbaum, I found that was his name, was killed. So we went there and we see that the owner, we went there like uh, 50 years later, 50 years later, when uh, I found out he had a son, when I took the picture, and when he was 50, he said, I want to see the spot where my father was born. So we went there, and I found out that Tannenbaum, in a way, means Christmas trees. And the owner of the land, by coincidence, was growing there Christmas trees. I just couldn't imagine so many coincidences taking place and i think you made this this image around christmas time as well didn't you that that exactly yes In but fact, tell me you know we've both you you photographed a lot of a lot of dead dead men dead bodies but there's a and at, at one point it's just a documentation you make this picture because it's there and you feel you need to make the picture. But to, to get past that and to engage the viewer and to make a connection with the viewer, uh, yeah. that's rare to do. And you did that in this image. And tell me what the, what the trick is to uh, capturing the humanity after a person is gone. Uh, eventually, this image inspired me to do in this style uh, 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 fashion photography. That I, I made the fortune as a fashion photographer. Uh, this was the image that inspired me to have a fashion style like this picture. Uh, and the, the, the lady, Florico's, Uh, anyway, at Look Magazine, they liked this picture. And the lady who, one of the lady who was running that magazine, her name was Fleur Coles. And it became, uh, uh, later on, uh, a fashion style that I used a lot. Well, I saw that in your images, and I, I, I was going to follow up with some fashion images. Um, behind this image because I saw that connection what you're doing here you're you're uh, you're using lines you're, you're 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 drawing with lines with just black and white and that's kind of what fashion is with those angles and working on a triangle and all that yeah. kind of stuff but you also did something here because this job. what's that you did a great job <laughs> thank you but what you're doing here you're also just with some simple lines, you were, once again, this is the every, every man photo. Every man photo, yes. And um, you don't need to see 
spaces. You don't need to see great details, but no. you have that all there and it's captured in there. Um, and that's, once again, this could, this is, a, this is like a, a digas, you know, just simple lines. Yeah. That, yes, this, yeah. This, this, I, I was influenced by the guy a great deal. Well, there you have it. I mean, it's the, yeah. it's the least amount of information you can give to still get that message across. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, so speaking of fashion, let's this talk is about- the consequence of that picture. You see the similarity of whiteness uh, and the model. Uh, this was taken much later when I became uh, a fashion photographer. And one of the reasons was that fashion photography uh, was getting uh, a lot of money at that time, you see. I didn't want to do other things. I want to do where I, I needed uh, uh, living. Uh, and and uh, so I used that same style that I used with that man in the snow. It's, uh, so you're, 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 you're building on your earliest influences throughout your career is what I'm saying. Can you imagine death and fashion, I connect them together. It's right. Weird. <laughs> it, no, it's not weird. There is, there's something there. And there, you're also, and I know this was probably this, this, fashion piece was was about veils and um well, let's do this yes it so, was but, a, i was going through at that time where uh i spent so many years in the army and then suddenly i'm out of the army and uh, in the army we had uh, we seen very few ladies but right after the army i have a job, and I, they gave me all these assignments to uh, uh, create interesting pictures. Now I'm seeing this. There's a there's a, a thread going through all these images, where um, yes, you're, you're making interesting connections. That, uh, and I'm I'm, I'm I'm sorry to talk so deeply about photography. I don't know if that's interesting to you. It's kind of interesting to me that uh, I think there you're making these connections that uh, come from your early work and you're putting it into the fashion and the portraiture now. And yes. But also you should see uh, one of the things that I introduced that not many photographers did. Uh, the background is always in order up and down, uh, 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 sideways, it's always parallel. Uh, the, the up line is parallel with the edge of the picture. Those things coming down is parallel with the left and right side of the picture. I like photography to be beautiful, but also scientifically orderly. Organized, you organize your images and you, you, uh, you use that narrow depth of field to turn that background into shapes and then you play with those shapes. That, you can see that in this one, you're just playing with those shapes. And yes. you love to do that and that's consistent throughout your work. But you also like to, you, you like to kind of hide, you don't, you don't want to give everything away with a straight on photo. You're trying to, you're always hiding things a little bit, aren't you? Uh, the, my idea was to surprise people by, by putting things in order. Uh, up and down lines, look at this, is parallel with the edge of the picture. So there, there is an order. The, uh, the the windows the white frames of each windows uh they create she's in the center and uh, and you see as if those were the rays of the sun 
going out in every direction. Uh, by the way, this picture uh, was taken of a model who was uh, the greatest model of Avedon, was his name, uh, famous uh, photographer, but he was too orderly, where I was orderly, but com more complicated. Uh, it's an amazing picture. As you see, uh, the, the lines uh, that go up and down are parallel to the side of the film. Uh, the, uh, the other lines that go up and down, they're parallel from the top to bottom. So it's, a, it's an amazing picture, as if they all meet uh, just above the bosom of this lady. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I think I get it, Tony. Good. Job. <laughs> Whoops, we lost our slideshow. Um, this, get back uh, to this. Because, so what you're doing here, you love to shoot through things, you love the lines, you love to uh, use your composition to guide the viewer's eyes, you love to establish order. Um, but even, so what, what year, do you remember the year? Was this before uh, Avedon shot with the elephants or after? Oh, way before, way before. Way, way before. before. So what yes. you so basically you you foreshadowed what uh, with the with the beaded uh, drapery here, what Avedon did with the with the elephants. Even the the body uh, position is yeah. quite similar. Yeah, this was before. Okie doke. Lovely. Lovely. Yes. Yes. Speaking of lines, you love your lines, and, and this, this is uh, kind of similar to what you just saw. It's I am straight into the picture, and because of the arms, she was flying, you see. Uh, the eyes were moving faster than the legs, so that they kind of disappear in the white paper that I was using in the studio. My idea was to create a an X, uh, but uh, her arms went a bit too fast, and the idea of a letter X is not clear enough, but the picture, I think it's still fabulous. No, it is fabulous, and you love, you love your X composition. Yeah. Where, uh, it's, a, it's, it, it's showing up a lot. Yes. You the love your lines. You love your uh, lines, whether it's uh, lines on a shirt, lines on a background, or lines from the sun here. Yes, the sun, he has uh, those things in front and the sun going through it and creates uh, an incredible picture. But this is not, uh, what year was this made? What year? Is this the 50s or is this early 60s? Like 59, 57. 59, right. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is, this is uh, contrary to what the, the editorial style was at that time. Um, yeah. Most editorial magazines, I don't know who this was made for, but they would, they would want a nice even light on the subject's face. And, and you didn't give them that very often. I, I think this was made for Life magazine. Uh, this man had been uh, on the Italian consulate. That's uh, De Chirico, right? Yeah. De Chirico. Yeah, De Chirico, yeah. But you're, 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 you're not, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of stubborn in the way you approach making pictures. Uh, you're not you're not doing what the magazines would expect at, at that time. No, because uh, I am using the shadow uh, of uh, this thing that he had uh, 
uh, at his window, I visited him in his house. Uh, and they, in, in Italy, they make this thing uh, uh, where uh, flies cannot enter, you know, but you can open it and go in and out. Uh, and this was taken near, uh, uh, just next to the Spanish steps in Rome. Yeah, lovely. It's famous. Um, so tell me what it's like. I've only seen one picture. I think the picture of Debbie Reynolds is the only one you used artificial light on. Uh, you showed up at this man's uh, residence without any lights. You just kind of rolled in there and, 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 and found some light. Is that true? Yes, uh, I believe uh, in using the available light. We are lucky to have the sun and the moon. By the way, I, I shot some pictures with just the moon at night. Uh, long exposure, but they are very interesting. Those are, I took those pictures when I went to the South Pole. And as I came back, uh, I arrived where the Nile Lake, where the Nile River begins. And eventually, I walked 46 days from the beginning of the Nile River till I arrived at uh, Alexandria near Cairo on the Mediterranean River. By the way, on the Mediterranean, uh, when I arrived there, uh, Colonel Nasser, his wife and his two children were waiting for me. And they said, uh, people uh, way down uh, the Nile told us that you were coming, so we came here to wait for you. Uh, when I arrived there, uh, he, he had show, he showed me the famous, uh, it's called the Rose, Rose uh, Stone, something like The Stone, like the Rose that. Stones, yeah. Uh, the, where, was that a stone? Right, where was primitive that stone? language that we didn't translate yet are right. written on it. Right. No, it's and, amazing. Yeah. Uh, As yeah. photographers, we really uh, we get to we get to uh, meet everybody and get to experience things that you know are rare. Yes. Yes. So here you're back to your lines. You've never left no. them. No. And you're doing the, this is this is. Uh, um, it's a superb uh, image. Yes, it is. But it's not expected. It's unexpected. Yes, he is in the very center. His face is at the very center of a, a place made with axes. Do you see what I mean? I'm starting you to see? get it. Yeah, axes <laughs> over axes, like over exposure. No, uh, you get you 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 keep coming back to the X. X marks yeah. the spot, Tony. Yes, that's right. But uh, yeah. this is uh, this is a fashion guy. This is not how you should photograph him, right? That's right. <laughs> uh, normally, a uh, photographer had established a, 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 a fashion style, but I threw that away. I used it, but I also was anti-fashion. This is really uh, a series of X's. You see what I mean? Yes, sir, the I do. X. Yeah. So what, uh, I mean, that's an interesting, you pull, as, as, as any artist should, you pull from uh, what, uh, what excites you, whether it's sculpture, um, yes. what and you use it in your, in your own work. What nature gives me. Uh, in this case, it was a series of axes, axes, you know, double exposed. Absolutely. So, 
Now this is it, this is out of out of your character. This is very interesting. And but the thing that is in your character is it's uh, it's it's unexpected. Well, this is, this is not. Uh, when I went to photograph this man, I went in his studio and I was told that he was having dinner in a restaurant uh, at 14th Street, New York City. Uh, and uh, and uh, he was a, a late man. He worked late. He liked to work late. Uh, what he impressed me was his famous picture, the nude descending the stairs. Do you know that picture? Of course, yes. So uh, I had to take his picture. And I went uh, under, uh, from this restaurant on 14th Street and 5th Avenue, and we went under a street light. Now it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. He was an, a late person. And above him is one of the street lights in New York City. And uh, I had to give him, at, at first, uh, I wanted his face to be exactly in the center. But then I said, let's create uh, an X with this light and uh, have a lot of black on the left side which was his right side facing me on the left. And it's one of my favorite pictures. But you understand this breaks, you know, every rule of... Uh... Every rule of photography. <laughs> Just so we're clear, I want to make sure we're on the same page. You're breaking all the rules again. Yes. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons I went to photograph Picasso after this is because he, in a way, began to break all the rules uh, in, in art. Uh, and I kind of did the same uh, in photography, uh, which other photographers were not interested in it. They were doing their thing. But I did like the way the strong uh, uh, street light near 14th Street, lit his head as if it was only a, just a, a dead head. How do you call it? Corpse? Uh, a, a corpse? A, a, as if it was a, a corpse, you know what I mean? Sure. It was just uh, no, no, no skin, you know, it was a... It's not necessarily a flattering picture, Tony. Uh, well, I wanted that. I wanted to surprise picture of people. Yeah, I mean, do you uh, just out of curiosity, do you remember um, what year this was and what uh, what your camera setup was? Just uh, the camera was the usual. My uh, by then I had a Leica. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a thirty-five millimeter. Okay. And taken between 14th and 15th Street under the lights uh, of Fifth Avenue. And this is, uh, this is before Tri-X, I think? Uh, this is, uh, well, super, I, what was the film back then, the black and white film? I'm sorry. I, to, uh, uh, I used the regular film, the regular black and white film. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's a today, uh, today a photographer with a modern digital camera would never even think of shooting something like this. And if they did, they'd make it look, you know, all perfectly lit and everything. And that's why I love this image so much. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a contrarian way to, to see the world with, a, right. with a reason exactly. behind it. You have a reason for what you're doing. Now, this, uh, when I went to take uh, this picture uh, on Jackson Pollock, 
what he had done was uh, make five of these round trip, round uh, shapes, and uh, and he called it my oranges because they were all kind of roundish, you see. Uh, and also, uh, he told me that uh, I really made five oranges for you, Tony. I, when he said that, I was surprised, and flattered a little. And we became very good friend. And uh, and we we were good to the very end. Nice. And I hope he gave you a painting or two as well. I just uh, I just uh, in your in your in your portraits. Um, this this is uh, different than most. It's more of uh, this is Givenchy. Yeah, this is Givenchy right. take in front of his shop. Right. In Paris, he had been a student uh, of. Uh, oh. Dior. Dior. Right. Yeah. It's just uh, I, I just I just love this because once again, um, action. It's action. It's nothing. If you go to if you go to to photograph a fashion designer today, uh, the publicist is going to, uh, you know, they're not going to be they're not going to really even allow a picture like this. This is uh, this is a capture. This is a moment. You know, and I know his work style. He was. He was, uh, you know, busy all the time and flying around, and it just uh, it captures a moment that I think it, it's it's a it's a more uh, telling not, portrait in that manner. Not only capture the moment, but do you see the shape of the letter X? Yes, sir, I do. You, I somehow you get you that, get that. That's why I took that picture, the letter X. When I saw that, uh, uh, came this picture. When I saw the X, the trees meeting at an infinity behind him, uh, uh, the trees and the sidewalks. I imagine uh, an X there. And that's, uh, but Tony, tell me the truth. You're not yes. thinking about X's before. You're just reacting to the X. You're not thinking about it. You're reacting to it. True. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I took the picture when I did see the X before he came out of the car. Really? Yes. Yes. I. I really liked to create the shape of the letter X. Okay. I think <laughs> I think you're seeing the X in your subconscious and you're and, and that's when you the, when you decide to push the button. It's a subconscious, yes. Okay. <laughs> I think I, I think I'm starting to figure that out. You never uh, want to show every you never want to give everything away, even when it's a famous personality that everybody recognizes, you're always trying to hide them a little bit. Yes, yes. This picture was taken when I went to do a, uh, a story on her. By the way, uh, I had been in Spain and I had photographed the greatest matador, Manolete. Uh, and then uh, a, a year or two later, I went uh, to Santa Fe, New Mexico to photograph George O'Keefe. Uh, George O'Keefe, uh, uh, this particular day, uh, 
outside uh, uh, we put the uh, uh, a carpet uh, on the sand and we were having beginning to have a picnic we had organized a scene as a picnic in the desert uh, however as soon as we fixed everything ready to start eating on a on a blanket uh, on top of the sand it starts to rain so we quickly put everything in the car and we had our picnic in the car and uh, i happened to slice this uh a Swiss cheese that had a hole in it, and I I gave it to her. I also served her the wine, and then uh, I looked back and she did these flirtations with me. So I think she was I think she was uh, flirting with you a little bit. Yes, yes, I I thought so too at the <laughs> time, and. Uh, and luckily, uh, she did it right in the middle of an X. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Beautiful. It's a, one of my favorite pictures. I love this picture, Tony. Good. Okay, I'll now, send, now, I'll now you. The address. I'll send you one. Oh, that's you're too kind. You're too kind. Uh -huh. You're you. You're still hiding. You're still hiding your your subject. Yes. That's now you can only see the top of the head. Yes, <laughs> you only see his hair, <laughs> and those are the the models uh, of three great ladies. Uh, the one in the center was the Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn. Hello. Yes, and and I I don't know who the other two are. I can't uh, see any. Martin. Lauren, Lauren Bacall and Princess of Monaco. The Princess oh, wow. Bacall and you heard of Maria. Lauren sure. Bacall. Lauren Bacall, yes. Yeah, that's 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 uh, that's three extraordinary people for sure. And his head uh, in the background. It's almost like you're trying to to see how much you can get away with when you're making these pictures, Tony. How how little of the subject you can show. Bravo! Very good. <laughs> yes, I like your style, my friend. Thank you. And you do the same thing here. The same thing there. Do you see in this picture? It's a it's a self portrait, isn't it? It's a self portrait. <laughs> I am shooting in a mirror. You see, I am, uh, uh, you see uh, me clicking as Givenchy is fixing the dress on, on uh, Lauren. That's, that's. Ursa um, Kit. Uh, what? Ursa Kit. Yeah, Ursa Kit, yes. And I am in the same picture with her. Yeah, it's a lovely moment, but you're still, um, you're hiding behind your camera. Yes. Your yes. your your subject. Well, one of your subjects is is motion. You're you're. Yeah. I mean, it's a. It's a super picture. It is a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful yeah. moment. Yes. But I can just imagine, you're challenging your editors with everything you shoot. Exactly. That which was is the how it should be. Well, which uh, this is one of those reasons uh, that uh, I emerged as one of the top photographers at that time. And that's such an important point, because as soon as as a photographer starts to uh, cater to the expectations of their editors their career is over. Am I right? Yes. Yes. I kept surprising my editors with ideas. You surprise your editors because you're the artist, you're the creator, you're you're setting the tone. You know, you're not you're not taking orders from 
from some conference room in New York City. Bravo, that's it. There you go. Is that okay? Perfect, perfecto. Good. Ah, perfetto, parla italiano. No, I don't. I, I have a, I have a huge uh, basket of foreign words that I can pull from, but I never know what language is going to emerge from that basket. I see. <laughs> uh, this is, Tony, uh, you're not, you're not even showing the, you're not even trying to show their faces anymore. <laughs> Well, because this guy sat in front of his painting for how long, Tony? Uh, oh, it, it took months he worked on this painting. Uh, uh, what I, uh, before I took this picture, I was lying on the floor with my head uh, against the picture to take his face as he was studying. Uh, his picture and he would get up from the chair do a little painting and goes back to the chair this went on for days <laughs> uh, and uh, and i was having fun uh, and as you can see my style uh, where the ceiling is parallel to the edge of the picture and the door on the left, uh, it's parallel to the left side. See, I always put order. Photography must have order. So this is what I love. This is what I love about this picture. You're staying true to your, to your style, your aesthetic. You have your shapes, you're working with your shapes. Now the shapes are in focus because uh, you know, the subject matter isn't really that interesting. It's about the work he's creating. So you're using your shapes as the focal point, but then you allow these, uh, the creative process in the artist's uh, studio, you know, uh, if we make this picture today, a photographer would be tempted to go and use Photoshop to remove that, that tissue or whatever on the floor and clean it up. And yes, it would be a less. It would, I'm not only does that complete your composition with the the single light bulb and the circles on the wall, this little white spot down in the the bottom right hand corner. Um, we 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 today, young photographers are so um, um, they concentrate on making everything perfect and they miss the greatness of the scene. Right. Right. Where I challenge. Say that again, Tony. I challenge you with my photography. I, ch I challenge the style in photography. It's so a, it's that's so important to say. Oh. It's so important to say. Yeah. Because uh, what we're doing today is we're spoon feeding everybody their images that you can look at for one second and so, you know you get it you see it on instagram and it's a one second look but when you make an image like this you challenge the viewer they have to spend some time on the page looking at that image and it's so important for you to say that you said exactly what i had in my head for 50 years so it only took you 40 years to figure that one out, Tony? <laughs> uh, this I love, but this is the other thing you do. You're not afraid to like uh, back up and uh, show the chaos around the scene. Once again, it's, 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 uh, it's fun. I love it. Yeah, uh, it was not raining. So what I did, uh, I told one of my assistants to go get uh, uh, a, a, bucket. a bucket uh, filled with water and create the rain. <laughs> right, but, but the, 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 the thing when you do that, you're not supposed to show the bucket, Tony. You're supposed to crop it out. That's what the normal photographer would do. But you <laughs> made the, the bucket part of your image. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Be be specific. <laughs> but what 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 is the thing? What makes you so um, 
a, a maverick. You're breaking from the herd all the time. Uh, I think that it is the aim of art to challenge order. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Well, I know because we uh, have we have this visual language established where you know there's things we show and there's things we don't show and we try to get the message across and yada yada but this one challenges it exactly and that's what we should be doing whether you're whether you're you know jackson pollock or tony Picaro, right yes otherwise it's not art right it's just a, it's just a useful thing for uh for the pages of a magazine that aren't advertisements and we're not interested in doing that i don't think yes tell me about this i mean once again you're showing things that we're not supposed to see <clears throat> well uh i was this was a long lens between me and him was a river going to the left into the Adriatic Sea. Uh, by the way, the first time I met this man, uh, he was only 19. And it was a, he was kind of wild uh, because he, was, uh, he, he owned uh, a motorcycle and he was going around the when he was that 19, 20 years old, he was using that motorcycle a great deal. He was quite an adventurous man. Uh, so he was a kindred spirit of yours. I mean, you drove around right. that same place in a Jeep, right? A Willys right. Jeep. Exactly. Which isn't much bigger than a motorcycle. Now, <laughs> this, this picture was taken where a river goes from right to left into the Adriatic Sea. And, uh, and I am at the other side. This was shot with a sort of a telescopic lens. Sure. Uh, he was shooting uh, eight and a half. No, La Dolce Vita. La Dolce. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Maria. Thank you. This was La Dolce Vita. Yes, mm -hmm. the sweet life. And it's a gorgeous picture. That's where... beautiful. It's beautiful, but you're supposed to you're supposed to show the director and the pretty girl. You're not supposed to show all the all the the noise around that. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it makes it so such a it's 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 the difference between a publicity still and a lasting image. That's what you're doing when you're doing this. Exactly, yes. But you knew that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> now, this so is this is just a friend of ours that I, I think this is, this reminds me of a picture that this man would make. You're, you're shooting in, in the style of Eugene Smith here, of Eugene Smith, aren't you? That's right, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I. Uh, I like those ladies uh, in the background too that add to the picture. Yes, you have to have those ladies in there. And uh, and I did not want to take the picture when he clicked because uh, he had uh, ruined his face in a fire. So. Uh, and I wanted to show that. Uh, so he took a picture uh, and uh, I didn't take a picture when him shot. I took him when he was rewinding, you know, to the next frame. Uh, and it's, uh, and also, I wanted to show Eugene Smith in a special way. 
the act of having taken a picture and his winding to the next frame. This is one of my favorite pictures. No, it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful, and it's uh, it's. I find it interesting on a lot of levels, just the composition and everything. But but the reason I wanted to show it is, um, you guys, your generation, you're kind of a classy bunch. You're always you're always looking good when you're out working. Is that true? Uh, it's the challenge to no, to be dressed dressed uh, you're always in a suit and a tie yes yes you're looking sharp when you go out i mean you're you're uh living la doce vita in a way in a way i still do <laughs> <laughs> oh that's wonderful uh, i admired uh, eugene smith i i thought his uh, work in spain uh, was a uh, Superb, one of the greatest picture story ever done by a photographer. I'm trying to uh, get back to our main screen here. Maybe that'll do it. One of my favorite pictures is this. Which one? Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that got us back to our main screen for our video, Tony. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm so grateful for uh, getting, getting uh, this, this opportunity to talk, talk with you about your work today and uh, you're an inspiration to us and uh, this younger generation, slightly younger generation, uh, what you accomplished and what the images you made and the life you lived and I just thank you for uh, the, the opportunity to, to, uh, to, to chat with you today. The way this picture is framed, uh, the door, the lines uh, uh, of the door going up across uh, uh, black, uh, it was superb. No, but you saw that and you, and you put his, you put his, uh, you put his head right where it needed to be in relation to the two women and the sorry the, the dark uh, the dark doorway. You know, it's a little. It's uh, it, I think it's a great portrait of Gene Smith, and it's it it, it also um, it kind of uh, hints at his uh, the the dark side that kind of haunted him later. Yes. Yes, I I try to honor him. No, you you certainly did, um, and and you honor me by uh, by talking with me today. Uh, so you just uh, when did when did your uh, uh, World War Two book come out? That was just a couple of years ago, right? With the HBO documentary. Oh, so there was a uh, not a book. Uh, we are working on a new book now with a new film coming up, hopefully 2020. Uh, but there's always a catalog that comes up with a, either a new show or... Okay. But the last book was done by Taschen, Entering Germany, and then a couple of other books. But uh, big book is coming up, hopefully 2020. Oh, I look forward to it. I look forward yeah. to it. Excellent. Kenneth, if you have any more questions, just shoot me an email. If for any verification or anything like that, I mean, Tony's doing really great for being 97 next month. Oh, no, some, it's wonderful. Sometimes so, we need to. Yeah. So, uh, Tony, right before we sign off, uh, Maria, can you hand him that contact sheet and show it to the camera? I want to see Tony with that contact sheet right behind him. Any of these contact sheets? Yeah, anyone. Okay. Let me see what we have there, Tony. Share with us. You see anything? Yeah, I see a few frames there. I think you're doing good. Where's that from? Oh, let's see. New York Athletic Club. <laughs> nice. You 19. Know 
1951. Tony, your contact sheet. Show us that contact sheet again. Like that. Lift it up higher and say something so it, it'll, it'll, here we go. Uh, what's written in the back, it says, uh, cameraman walking. This was the eve uh, Carmen and I hugged each other for about one hour. I did not know where to take her, so I walked her back to her house of her mother. Well, that's it. That's beautiful. That's a that's a <laughs> that's amazing. I knew something would be cool if you just pulled out a contact sheet for yeah. us. And I love how you went from the patterns on the the floor to the pattern in the window, and then I uh, you put her in that beautiful light in the that window light there. Just beautiful. Thank you, Tony. You're quite well, welcome. thank you so much. Thank you, Maria.